Welcome back. It's Lionel, tech lead and partner at West Vault. And today I want to talk to you guys about a major myth always going around that I saw in the comment section, which is this myth that PHP cannot scale, AKA PHP cannot be used for enterprise. Now this is an absolute myth that keeps com coming back year after year, month after the month. I don't know who has started it, but I want to give you some insights into why this is such a big myth. And now let's go back. Usually what happens in my office is this guy pops up, maybe, man, do you know, I'm going to a new startup and we are going to go to 100 billion new users next week. Lionel, are you ready? Are you sure the servers are ready? Get me the language. Get me what Elon Musk is using. Get me what Facebook is using. I want all this stuff. And I've got ready, I've, you know, I've got $50 in my bank account for marketing and this idea is going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. I tell you, first week, 5 million users. Everybody in Singapore is going to sign on. Next week, everybody in the world is going to sign on. 5 billion users. Yeah, I know some of them don't have phones, but that's okay. And get this, get this. This, this is going to be awesome, man. The next one, 30 billion users because every cat, dog, Cow, sheep, yeah, my app's got this, man. And you, they, no one is looking at this. You think Facebook's got the world? They haven't looked at the pet market. So I want you to go and scale this whole thing. Scale it, like, like I need servers. I need, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just so worried about this enterprise scaling issue, man. Like, uh, are we using the best? Maybe you need big data. Maybe, maybe I need a, a data server, uh, the size of Iceland. Come on, just, just make it happen, okay? Yeah. And, and, and make it, hang on a second. So let me break down for you five reasons why that is a myth and why it's wrong about PHP being slow or unable to scale or unable to be used for enterprise software. So the first point I wanna make, right, is that PHP isn't usually the bottleneck. It, it usually isn't the bottleneck. You see a lot of people always commenting that oh, this is the, it's the language. There's so much focus on the language. But if you really look, in my experience, most of the bottleneck is in the database, okay? Remember, PHP is just handling input-output. Most of the bottleneck is in the database because if I'm inserting a row, the database is usually locked. There's, you can probably have multiple servers running the PHP code, but you cannot have multiple servers running the database unless you shard the whole thing. So most of the problem is in other parts of the software. It could be in the assets, you know, if you've got heavy images, who cares about how fast your web server is? If you're doing, you know, a huge TIFF image, that's a problem. Second area, right? It could be database. Database is a major problem. You're running very inefficient queries, very slow there, bang, you know? So really pointless. Um, looking at efficiency in the wrong place. I always tell my clients, this is like you buying a Ferrari and getting stuck in a traffic jam. The problem is the traffic jam, not the Ferrari. No matter how fast your Ferrari is, if you're stuck in a traffic jam, it will be that speed. Why go and spend millions of dollars in the Ferrari when you should be looking at maybe buying a helicopter, right? So. This is the first problem, and I see this happening. Usual culprit database, the JavaScript, that's a messy area, something like that. That's the first point about it. The second issue is PHP is actually fast. I don't know who came up with this myth, right? It's been even in 5.6. If you compare the languages, right, PHP is actually ahead of Python, actually ahead of uh, Spring Boot Java, uh, actually ahead of, uh, you know, Cobalt, one of these things that, you know, you haven't seen. In terms of a web language, it is actually pretty fast. With 7 and 8, there's no excuses. We are at the, almost at the top of the pack. But who originates this myth is, uh, you know, especially with the Python people just so quiet. Like When it comes to a scaling speed thing, you almost never see them uh, get into the, the fight, you know, they just let all the other houses and languages clash it out and then they stay on one side. But yet everybody is, 
in the Python camp. Everybody loves this, uh, uh, what do you call, numeric number processing speed. They never talk about it there. It's actually not slow. If you compare it, it's actually very fast. It's among the fastest languages there because it's just so light, you know? The third point about it is that uh, the comparison frameworks just doesn't make any sense. So one excuse that you get, you see, right, is you have a lot of these sites where they put out all the different languages together and they put on top maybe Scala, maybe Go, and then at the bottom it's PHP raw, PHP with a framework. Now, to me, this is the stupidest comparison in terms of language speed. And let me explain to you why. We don't look at raw speed when it comes to languages because it's dumb. Like, let me give you a very easy real life example. If we were to compare the fastest vehicle that you can get, right? You would say, okay, I would like a Bugatti Veyron, okay? Pay a lot of money and it's very, very fast. But you forgot a lot of considerations. Number one, are you actually driving on roads? Does your road look like a track? Most of the time, no, you know, you got traffic lights, you got speed bumps. Second point, it could be an off-road, right? It could be on a mud path. Is that what a Bugatti Veyron will be useful for? Would a Ferrari do? So a lot of considerations need to be done before that. And then another question, you buy a Veyron and you may not have any features. And that's another issue. So like PHP frameworks are loaded with features. They're like a standard uh, Toyota Camry or something like that. They've got aircon, heating, uh, sound system, powered seats, powered uh, heated seats, all these kind of good jazz in there. And then you compare that to maybe a, a Ducati, a motorbike with nothing in it. You know, there's no aircon, there's no uh, powered anything to make it as fast as possible. That's dumb. Like if you were to start out, I saw some comparisons with say, um, maybe Go, right? And it, they do, they run it without connecting to the database. What kind of interaction are you going to have? You're going to be missing all these features. So what I like to do is go like for like and compare, you know, maybe if you're talking about the speed between a framework and a framework, and another framework that has all the features in there. Like one big one is Express versus Laravel, right? That's incorrect. Express has got nothing. It's such a lightweight um, API style framework that's missing the ORM. There's no database hooked up to the thing. So you have to go like for like. It doesn't make sense to use this kind of comparison. Okay, popping up to number four. Number four is where a lot of people make this comparison again. And usually it's due to some dumb startup people or people who have had that experience. They've come out, they've done a quotation. This happens very common in the business anyway. People go out, they get a quotation from cheap providers that don't know what they're doing. And their provider, because of the cheapness, selects PHP and they don't code things efficiently. And then after they get burnt and after things are really slow, right? You know, I've seen code that has been taken from an existing CMS that they had and reworked and things are just so slow uh, because of the coding. And then they say, okay, let's get some professionals. And most of these guys, the professionals, right? They, you know, maybe they'll just pick some Node.js or something like that. And they'll say, oh, I blame it on the language. No, cost per cost, dollar per dollar, if you get the right coders, even in PHP, and despite PHP or whatever about PHP, you'll see that the speed is right up there. It's the level of coding. Think for example, right, that you hire, you again back to my car example, and the guy hooks up the brakes on your car. You know, so you drive everywhere, the handbrake is on. What do you expect, right? Imagine if it's not service, you know, if it's greased up, the engine's all clogged up. What do you think? It's not the car, it's the people who manage this whole thing. And then flip it to the last point or second last point, which is plenty of ways to optimize. That's why I say don't look too much into the scaling factor. Why? Because when you see those ranking tables and you see those um, calculations, right? That is without optimization. And some frameworks, some systems come with optimization already thrown in. Like for example, one of the biggest examples is that 
Uh, here we have a WordPress site, okay? I know WordPress is not the fastest in the world, but there's so many things you can do to get around the optimization and the scaling factor. One of the biggest ones I would say is caching. Caching is one of the most effective ways and it's unbelievable how much power caching can do. What is caching? Caching is basically, imagine if I had a storybook, right? Let's say I had a storybook. And inside 100 pages in there, I just did a quick, quick sheet of it, a summary of it, and then I refer to that. So if I had all the information ready, I wouldn't have to keep referring into the storybook and get to, to know that kind of information. So think about it, right? If you have a huge database and people just keep looking at the same pages all the time, if you just put it one side, cache it, file cache it, mem cache it, read this is, doesn't matter what you want to do, that you cut down the load entirely, 100%, regardless of what language you're using. And you can even jump more onto that, right? You can say, hey, let's do a CDN. You know, let's put our assets on a CDN. So it gets even closer to you. And those guys are at the CDN companies, they focus on scaling. So it's just absolutely rubbish, right? Where people say, oh, you know, WordPress cannot scale. I get a good CDN and a WordPress and a site that doesn't move. Bang, we can handle thousands, thousands, millions of users, no problem. There's so many techniques to optimize these days. Every single vendor has got optimization techniques. There are databases for you to scale massively. You don't have to use whatever that's stock. You can you know, get a separate database. Database companies themselves are focused on scaling. I mean, I've seen somebody say things like, hey, I want to have Kafka there. I would like to get, um, you know, Apache uh, instead of MariaDB that can't scale. I want to use MongoDB. I want to use big data. Now, I hang out with the MongoDB guys here in Singapore, and I can tell you, right, that they are now laughing at 50 gigabyte databases, okay? Because everybody's working out. These are all, you know, MariaDB are really working on getting the scaling up. So plenty of places to scale. You can find ways. You can even push it to external servers. You don't have to you know, you heard of this elastic cloud kind of thing, all this, this, these systems, you don't even have to worry. This isn't 10 years ago where it was a single system. And then finally, point six, right? The bonus point is stop worrying about scaling, okay? I have been waiting. I've been waiting for years. I just tell anyone who walks into my office, I would love to have a CEO of a co-founder or somebody tell me, Lionel, my site is going to go from zero users to 1 billion users in 10 weeks. I want to break your, your code. I want to outscale the thing. And I'm, I'm telling them, come on, bring it on, bring it on, you know? So one big misconception in enterprise, right, is that, oh, you know, our company is really big. We got so many people. We need the biggest. That's not true. In fact, let's talk about this in detail, let's drill down into it. Think of it, imagine your enterprise. What is your, who is your software serving? It might only be serving the accounting department. The accounting department might only be using it two times a month. So the number of users is actually really, really small. The other one is paid services, right? So you say, okay, we're gonna charge $9.99 for this service and it's gonna scale. Darn right, man, no one is, you know how slow people take paid services? Look at YouTube, millions of free and then the number you paid is like 4%. So there's no need for that scale factor. You don't have to worry about these things. Where I would switch 0.6 into, right, is instead about scaling the code, learn to scale the features. Then that's where PHP comes into the, into the fold. Do not focus on just the speed of it. Focus on how soon you can be agile and roll out new features because that's what counts. What's the point of cutting 0.1 second, right, off a second, 10% speed increase, when the new feature takes one year? You know, if you're working with Java, you gotta redo the objects, everything's all fixed together. That's where it's more important. And that's the bottom line because tech lead said so.